This week on Skyhawk Scoreboard, we cover the season's wrap-up for football, soccer, volleyball, and cross-country. Hello, I'm Haley Knipple. And I'm Deanna Atkins. This week on Skyhawk Scoreboard, football ended their first winning season in nearly a decade with a win over Shadron State in Nebraska with a score of 43-34. to We had a lot of awesome players that helped us have wins like this, one of whom is this guy. P.J. Hall is the third player in FLC school history to eclipse 1,000 rushing yards and holds the second highest rushing total, 78 yards behind Scott Stamper's record set in 1982. Haley had the chance to sit down with PJ to ask him about his great season. Right, so when I sat down with PJ, he was just so humble, and he mostly talked about his teammates and how grateful he was for them. Um, so like you said, he didn't quite make his goal of beating the school record for rushing, but he's only a sophomore. He's got two more seasons to play, and I think he's going to do a great job. I think so, too. I mean, getting that close, it just makes you want to try harder the next year, and especially he's got his team members behind him, apparently, is what it sounds like. So. Right, yeah. He said, um, great. what did he say? Something like, it's my job to run fast, and it's their job to make sure that I can. So, like there we you said, go. a lot of teamwork there. Because of great players like PJ, the Skyhawks finished their, set, their season at seven wins and four losses. Their only four losses were against ranked teams, including the Division I school, Montana State. Congratulations to our Skyhawks' first winning season in nine years. We hope for another successful year. Linebacker Andrew Ike was voted Rocky Mountain Athletic Conference first team. He is 14th in the league for most tackles and tied for the number of most forced fumbles. Jaquel Thompson, Kenny Shinley, Sione Folamaloa, and Dalton Lane were voted RMAC second team. PJ Hall, Jordan Doyle, Juan Hull, Colton Tiegler, Joshua Royball, and Michael Benavides were all named to honor roll. Congratulations to our Skyhawks. So as this incredible season ends, we are also losing Coach John L, who will be at Kentucky State University next year. That is true, but who we are getting now is Coach Ruffalato. Now he was with the boys the last time they had a winning season. Mm -hmm. So we can probably expect some really great things from them coming up in the fall, and I think that we'll maybe have a repeat of a winning season. I hope so. Another team that had a good season this year is women's soccer. Women's soccer ended their season with 12 wins, 5 losses, and 4 ties, making it to the RMAC championship game where they lost 1-0. They did, however, make it to the first round of the NCAA Division II Women's Soccer Championship, unfortunately falling to St. Edwards over penalty kicks. Preceding the NCAA championship game, our girls ended their season ranked 25th in the country. Shout out to a few of the players that we noticed on the field this season. The first being Renee Terrell. She netted the game-winning goal, which advanced the team to the NCAA championships. Alicia Sanchez was tied for most winning goals in the RMAC conference, and Caitlin Espinosa was voted RMAC Goalkeeper of the Year and led the conference in number of saves. She saved 108 shots compared to the 14 goals scored against her. Deanna spoke with Caitlin about her season. So I'm here with Caitlin Espinoza. Now, Caitlin, you just been named the RMAC Goalkeeper of the Year. What can you tell me about this accomplishment? Well, it was definitely kind of unexpected. Uh, it's definitely been my goal since freshman year. I wanted to beat JY, who plays for mine. So I finally got it my senior year, the year that it counted. And I don't know, it was really, it was a great personal experience, for sure. I was very happy about it. So your coach was also um, the RMAC Coach of the Year. What's it been like playing for, with him for four years now? It's definitely been an experience for the books. Like he's a great coach. He knows his stuff. He definitely knows how to handle all of the players. He knows how to handle me, which is actually kind of shocking. Um, it's kind of hard to do, but he's a very respectable person, and he will always have my respect. I will definitely miss Jimmy. It's been really hard <laughs> to be a senior and knowing that I'm done. So it's been sad, <laughs> but I'll miss him for sure. What are some of the highlights of your year since you've been here for four years? Highlights? 
I would definitely say, that's actually kind of a hard question. Um, playing, honestly, being able to start as a freshman, um, working my way up against a senior or a junior, and then she was a senior, and then just getting better and better, and then finally she was my coach, so that was even better. I think being able to play with Amanda Rosso and being coached by her was amazing, and she definitely made me the competitor that I am today, so definitely give my props to Amanda. Great. Well, thank you so much, Caitlin. So as you can see after that interview, this was an amazing senior year for Caitlin. Alicia Sanchez and Caitlin Espinosa were each voted RMAC first team. Jordan Hicks and Brooke Millay were voted second team. Carolyn Archer and Courtney Riley were each honorable mentions. Coach Jimmy Hall definitely had a big impact on his players' performance this season, and as Deanna mentioned in her interview with Caitlin, he was also voted RMAC Coach of the Year. So I think it's definitely safe to say that with a coach like that and the wins that they did have, the girls had a great season. They did, and unfortunately the team that they lost this year was St. Edwards, beat them the time before, so hopefully they can bring it back in for this next season coming up. Right, I think they'll be able to. Hey, uh, do you remember what the mascot is for St. Edwards? They are Hilltoppers. Okay, so that means that they're goats, right? Yes. Okay, so maybe next year we'll be able to get their goat. You get it right. You do. Moving on. Men's soccer season ended in the RMAC Championship semifinal game, losing 6-2 against Colorado School of Mines. Their season totals 12 wins, 6 losses, and 2 ties, finishing 5th in the RMAC Conference. Tamino Kroger, Giannis Becker, and Sean Cleary were all voted RMAC first team. Zach Lawrence was voted second team, and Coleman Kane and Lauren Velen were named honorable mention. Giannis Becker and Zach Lawrence were second and third in the conference with assists per game, while Tamino Kroger was tied for second in points per game. Giannis Becker was second in shots and shots per game as well. Another solid year for our men's soccer, but maybe next year they'll play more like the girls. Deanna, is your mic really expensive? So I'm just, I'm gonna, I'm gonna just, okay. Uh, we're gonna go to volleyball now. Volleyball didn't have the season they wanted, ending at five wins and 21 losses. Key injuries to senior veteran players didn't help. However, with the promise of a young and hardworking team, the Lady Skyhawks have the potential to be great. Some key players we noticed on the court this season were Ali Delamico and Matisse Monti. Both girls were named to the RMAC honor roll and definitely heard their names on the court a lot at the games. We wish the team luck in their next season. So Deanna, what do you think you saw um, from these girls that kind of showed their improvement? I saw a lot of communication out there on the court. Their executions went really well for the most part. I mean, they are a young team, so they're learning how to talk to each other. Right. I mean, most of them were incoming freshmen this year, but I think that as the years go on, as they figure out who to call out when they need help and all of that kind of stuff, we'll see a really strong volleyball team. Exactly. It's been a rebuilding year, of course, for them. Of course. Men's and women's cross country ended their season on a high note. At the NCAA South Central Regionals, women's cross country finished one spot short of advancing to the NCAA Championships, scoring fifth overall, while men's cross country finished 15th overall. Shout out to our cross country seniors, Tate Lagoska, Garrett Sapikoff, Kiara Glover, and Alexis Work. Congratulations to our seniors. So fall sports are wrapping up, but basketball is now in full swing, and I absolutely love going to those games. I do too, Haley, but one thing I've noticed is not a lot of students are wearing their school colors, the gold, white, and blue. Yeah, I think, honestly, okay, so our games are on Friday and Saturday nights. Yes, they are. And we live in a town that has a really fun nightlife, and so I think what happens is our students plan on going out afterwards, and they want to maybe not be wearing a t-shirt. Yeah, they probably want to look a little nicer, especially going out to some bars downtown. Maybe they could do a special Friday night $3 pint night or something to get them to wear those school colors. Yeah, I see what you're saying. Like maybe some of our sponsors could offer, you know, a discount or a coupon if you are wearing your shirt from the game. Anyway, you heard it here first. Good idea for all of you sponsors. This is our last episode of Skyhawk Scoreboard this year for 2015. <laughs> for Go Skyhawk.
Talks.com. I'm Haley Knipple. And I'm Deanna Atkins. See you next time.